if you can remember uh, when you decided to plant to sponsor Valleydale Church, what, what kind of vision did y'all see? Well, we, uh, I, I believe it was going to be a good, strong church. I, I could see it reaching a lot of people in that area. Five years ago, we gathered at our Yes to the King 25th anniversary celebration. And I challenged you as a church to join with me in building a church for unchurched people. We are here to talk about this wonderful house behind us, especially this door. About 50 years ago, I was a lot younger. We both were. But what did we use this house for? We used it on Wednesday nights. We had church service here. I was here when it, when it really started small, very small. In fact, uh, <clears throat> the first Sunday we were here, uh, 35 people were in attendance, and we were five of them. First of all, I've, I've got a basic philosophy that, that uh, it's not my job to bring a vision to a church. It's my job to know what God's doing in a church and help articulate and lead in that direction. A big thing that we did was we kind of broke some of those things with classes up into multiple groups, gave people a vision for multiplication. We had the, started the campus downtown with Iron City. It's now, of course, its own flourishing independent church. So we, we wanted to get move the church to a mindset of multiplication. I said, we've got to have a building. We're not gonna attract anybody with that little permastone building that seats a hundred or less. It was way beyond our capability at that particular time. But every one of those guys that were in there, they were saying, if this is what God says do, let's do it. A, a, a pastor has to teach his people what's important. And missions has always been the heartbeat of Valleydale. In fact, the church was begun uh, as I'm sure has been said, and you know, because there was a need for uh, an evangelistic church in this area, the vision was cast for unchurched people. I just knew that the, this church, there was a greatness about this church that needed to be excavated. It's not that it had to be created, it just needed to be excavated. It needed to be uncovered again. And so my vision, our, my first message after I got in there was to say, we're gonna, we're gonna walk as one, and we're gonna have fun doing it. From her humble beginning in 1970 to this last decade of the 20th century, Valleydale Baptist Church has sought to be found faithful. This magnificent $2.5 million facility is more than just brick, mortar, and steel. Well, this is beautiful, isn't it? There's nothing like a cool mountain stream. You can be a part of any church. But at Valadale, the church is a part of you. You know, 2,800 years ago, the prophet Isaiah said that Jesus was going to be like a stream of water flowing through the deserts. In a lot of ways, that's the way I think of our church, Valleydale Baptist. We're a stream of cool water flowing through a desert. Any memory, any highlight, any important thing to me from growing up was Valleydale. My Christian friends really keep me accountable. And it's great to see new people come to Christ and get active in the youth group. I loved Wednesday nights so much that my parents would ground me from Wednesday nights. <laughs> When I got in trouble, they knew where to hit me where it hurt. I like the kids' musicals that we put on, and I also like the camp we go to. I'm Leanne Martin. My husband was Keith Martin. So, so our kids grew up here and grew up in this, in this, in this great church. You know, people that loved and cared for them and loved and cared for us. It was a, it was a great. It was, um, without a doubt, it was our best time of ministry without a doubt. He really loved you guys too, and he poured into you. If you had anything to do with choir, even those that didn't like choir, liked choir because of, because of Keith Martin's leadership in the ministry at that time. I mean, we have fun memories. My friends accept me for who I am. I can be myself here. Lots of fun memories. When it comes down to it, um, 
I am a believer and I am a faithful attender and I serve in the church because of the foundation that was built from the very beginning. Summer camp, winter, uh, spring break, break camps. You know, I've taken, I've, I've taken places, y'all places that probably no student pastor should ever take you, but yet you did not complain except for a little bit. Through every single challenge, God has met that with this provision. It's just been amazing to see time after time after time after time. It's the song, God, He's never failed you yet, and He never will. We're all up here, and we're all serving the church because we saw our parents serving the church. Um, it's really cool to see it kind of come full circle now that my kids are in the youth group that really kind of made me who I am and have given me these lifelong friendships like the one sitting right next to me. That's just the tune of Valley Dellett's family. Um, Ann Odom is still serving. Miss Pam Taylor is still serving. There's all these people who poured, poured, poured their energy, their time, willingly and selflessly. And what a challenge to all of us, um, because it wasn't just for a season. We still see so many of these people still serving in these roles decades later. It's a joy to see Shannon, who I got to lead her senior year in small group. And, um, and now we're in the same life group with babies in the nursery. And our kids are serving the church during VBS because they see us serving the church. So it's a legacy that, I mean, started with a foundation that Eddie helped all of us build. So you guys, yes, there's a legacy there, but it's because you allowed yourselves to be used of God to make a difference in people's lives. And it shows today. I'm Leanne Martin. My husband was Keith Martin. Uh, we served at Valleydale from 1993, 30 years ago, this year, to um, 2003. Praise is something we do with our whole life. Well, he was a musician, he was a pastor, he was a friend. I still, he was a mentor. When we're out at conferences, I still have Music ministers come to me, usually in tears, and say, uh, you have no idea how he helped me. He pastored the choir. I think that's why you hear so much about him uh, from people who, who were in that ministry, because they really would, um, they, they, they were bonded together, and nobody wanted to miss choir rehearsal. You know, one of the things, and, and I, I'm gonna kinda go back to the productions, uh, because you know, we did a, a large production every year. Um, and with those, we were, it was very important to us to do more than just a pageant of the life of Christ. We wanted to show how an individual's life could be changed because of the impact of the story of Christ. It was a different story every year. It was almost like, even though you knew the story of Christ, and I don't, have you heard about dropping the devil in the hole? Have you heard that story? Yeah, I have, <laughs> with, but that's, you gotta tell it to the video. Okay, so, you know, trying to come up with a whole resurrection scene, and we had established a Satan character throughout. We created um, a large stairway that went up the center of the, uh, over the choir loft. We built the tomb over that. Uh, there was a guy that did robotics here in the church that created a way to roll the stone. That was his thing, and it, Keith got so excited over it. But anyway, then we built a trap door in front of the tomb. Satan was in a long cape that he had worn the entire uh, show. And at a precise moment, when Jesus stepped out, he charged the tomb with the idea of you thought he was going to that there was going to be a fight and so jesus grabbed the cape 
opened it, Satan went down, he whooshed it. That's the moment people remember. I run into, I run into people your age that are like, I remember, I was there as a kid. I remember when Satan disappeared. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> so anyway, that was probably our trademark thing. Just so you know, Pam was the one in under the, with the devil. <laughs> it was a, it was a great, it was, um, without a doubt, it was our best time of ministry, without a doubt. Hey, Valleydale, Rick and Bubba here. Hey, first of all, wow, what a nice new big screen. It is, Rick, I'm impressed with this. It's called the Grace Adventure. Uh, which means, you know, this, this, we need to be thinking of it like this. This is just equipping you, the congregation, to do the job that God has called you to do and a nice place to play basketball. It's hard to believe we're at the end of a five and a half year journey of faith, building a church for the unchurched. What you have built is a remarkable tool that can reach out to our community for the kingdom of Christ. And you're playing a critical role in our community. Moving to this facility, we went through eight building programs while we were here as pastor and family. It's like we were <laughs> constantly. The first one began three years, two years into our pastorate. So 1986, we started a building program. Find us faithful. Yeah, that find that us faithful. That's right, the original <laughs> educational building. But um, when we relocated here, I kind of thought, I've done this a little bit, you know, a couple of times we know kind of what to expect. Um, and there was a great unity in, in moving here to the church. I didn't anticipate um, the challenges that would be after that, uh, which, you know, I thought this is going to be easy, but it just wasn't. <laughs> I guess for all of our ministers here, the greatest challenge was the debt. Uh, we had I think when I came on staff, it was about $15 million. Uh, and uh, that created a lot of challenges for, for the church and, and especially for missions. Uh, and, and so, uh, but God always provided. Uh, Valleydale has always been a generous church. And uh, so whenever somebody had a need, there was always somebody there to help meet that need. And all the change and, um you know, really bringing a lot of restructuring, uh, you know, and obviously like the hiring and, you know, um, you know, sometimes you have to let staff go. I mean, those kinds of things were really, really hard to lead through. And, and we cer I certainly didn't do that perfectly. I think that the Lord in his kindness uh, was able to use my weakness and, and really bring about um, what I believe is today a very healthy church. Um, seeing the note being burned a few weeks ago, getting a text from Jeff going, hey, did you know we paid it off, and getting to go online and watch that and celebrate that, knowing how difficult that had been. Now, that's huge. I'm so grateful for Jeff and Jim Keys and our teams that really worked hard and in dark nights and uh, didn't know if how, how many more funds they could move around to make all the numbers fit. And I would argue that one of the most beautiful things right now is I hope that there is a, a true appreciation as God brings more and more new people that the ones who fought through it all, who paid the price, can enjoy the fruit of their faithfulness. That they can say, wow, I'm glad Glad I stuck it out. Listen, we paid off the debt. What y'all want to do? Huh? Let's do something, all right? It's Romans 8, 28, that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Not that everything that happens is good, but God can take whatever, even something like the dead, and use it for good uh, in a church's life. And I've seen that happen. God is truly faithful. And he demonstrates that not just to his people, he demonstrates it through his people. And the faithfulness of so many who fought through, who 
continued to give, continued to come, continued to serve, when it just didn't seem like it was going anywhere, was how God showed his faithfulness. And it was a beautiful, beautiful picture of his grace in human form. You know, I think the heart of Valley Dale really is becoming outside of our four walls. And we see that God's heart is for the nations and that we can play a vital role in that. One of the things that excited me about Valley Dale when I first came was uh, the church's interest in missions and, and doing hands-on mission, not just sending money, but also participating in that. How has Valley Dale impacted us? It is beyond what I could explain in words. But I'll tell you this much, I will say that without the prayer, without the care, the concern, and the love from people at Valleydale, we would not still be on the field. I feel like um, God has used Valleydale to keep us, to strengthen us, to encourage us. Um, it's just been a, an amazing partnership and we've, we, we love Valleydale. To see the change in people's lives, what it does to them when they go to Clarkston, Georgia, or New Orleans, or they go to Nepal, or uh, to China, uh, to Moldova, to see how God uses that for their own discipleship, that they are changed. We have never ever felt alone or forgotten, even though we're thousands of miles away that we've always felt so loved and prayed for and um, we come down and we feel like we have family in Alabama. When someone asks us about who is your sending church, we typically have to say, well, there's technically one sending church, but we really feel like Valleydale's our sending church yeah. because of the uh, partnership that we have. Yeah, the strong connections. God has blessed us and, and enabled us to be a, a part of the Grace Adventure and have been faithful to that. I see a lot of things happening here at Valleydale. Yeah, 2004, I never dreamed of all the things that have happened at Valleydale. We expected great things and great things have happened. I know that we have a great pastor who is an expository preacher that is bringing the word we can rely on every day. We have paid the debt off, which is a huge thing. Uh, we have mission partners all over the world and we're sharing the gospel with them uh, wherever they are and partnering with them. We also feel very confident about our leadership, how the mission, the values, the measurements, our staff, all are leading us to great places and I know that the next 50 years are going to be even better than the 50 years we've just experienced. Valleydale has been strongly, predominantly involved in missions uh, locally and globally, uh, from our backyard all the way to the nations. Um, and we've also had opportunities to get more involved in planting and replanting. We re, uh, planted Iron City. We have just recently replanted uh, the church at Old Town, which is in Helena. Um, we feel God calling Valleydale to be more involved with replanting and planting. Part of the vision of when Jason Dees came here, he was already talking about Iron City, and that was something that um, the Saints of Valleydale were buying into with him coming and praying. A number of churches that if you look at between 1950 and 2010, it's hard to find churches that started and made it during that window. The desire was to start a church in the south side of Birmingham and have a connection here at Valleydale uh, to be able to see a church flourish there long term. I like to say that the church of Old Town is 189 years old, but it's also about two and a half years old. It's First Baptist Church Helena, and then most recently as we replanted became Old Town. Valleydale was able to come in and say, hey, we want to meet the challenge and we're going to see what we can do to ensure that there's a healthy church here. We put together a group where we just started meeting and, and getting on the whiteboard and saying, what is God calling this church to do? And that really landed on what we're calling the Valleydale family of churches. We are in a very I think, strategic place. Um, Southside is the most diverse neighbor in the state of Alabama. Uh, our church building is now in the same block with UAP, which is always
Texas, top three most diverse campus in the country. Precious people at Valleydale, again, got behind this vision, started praying, started giving. There would not be an Iron City Church if it wasn't for uh, Valleydale uh, and the mission and vision that they got behind uh, to see Iron City go from a dream to reality. Our mission at Old Town is equipping families uh, to live with Christ-centered purpose. And we're seeing that roll out. And we've, just this summer, we've had, um, we've had 24 baptisms. Uh, most of those to all children and, and uh, students, uh, just seeing God work. And uh, this was a church that went from having, averaging about three to four young people, uh, people under the age of 18, and we typically average somewhere around 140 every Sunday. That's what excites me is with this family of churches and where I see Valleydale going is we want to lock arms with churches like Old Town and like Iron City and hopefully other churches. We want to lock arms uh, with churches that are in our backyard, all across North America, but also internationally. And we want to go together, and we want to fulfill the Great Commission together, because I do believe that we can do more together than we can just by ourselves. When a church plants another church, they're, they're committed to a bigger vision outside of themselves. It's a kingdom vision. Uh, you know, the impact that you enjoy here can happen in all of these other communities, but the truth is it doesn't. It, even in Alabama, uh, dozens and dozens of churches close every year, uh, and, and that leaves people with a need. You know, when I think about Valuable's legacy, um, when I think about you know, Iron City, other churches that are now coming under uh, Valuable's care, um, the ways in which this is just a beautiful part of the kingdom. Um, there will be people that come to know and grow in Jesus that never know Valleydale's name, but would not be in the kingdom from a human perspective without Valleydale Church. Just to think about that legacy of faith and faithfulness um, that we'll be able to enjoy together in Jesus' kingdom one day, I think is uh, an incredible thing to be able to reflect upon.